Jesus spoke to me one day, praise his holy name. Lord, we pray that you bless the brother when he brings us a word, that it will be to a lifting up of the 
the saints and for the saving of the lost soul if they be one among us, Lord. Lord, bless the singers when they come. And Lord, we thank you for your precious Son, Jesus, above all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank <laughs> you. 
up. Well, make it feel good. Thank you. Oh. 
Maybe you want to come and help me. <laughs> Oh. 
If we can stand and listen, Brother Bill, the old devil will have to tear us meeting all pieces. Yeah. But listen, Brother, I got pranked a long time ago with some power from on high. Brother Bruce, when you get in to his kingdom and with him, Brother, let me tell you something. He'll give you something, Brother, you can fight him off with. Amen. Amen. He's stronger, Brother Bill. Yeah, yeah he is. We, we need to hold up. Hold up that banner, Brother. One day after a while, listen. I, I bought my ticket a long time ago. Don't have no reason. Never, never even come into mind. Never will. That I got a better place on the other side of life. Got loved ones. Bunches of them. Done out, stretch me and gone. I want to meet them, don't you? And it's up to us, brother, what we make out of this meeting tonight. Yeah, right. If we gather here for anything else, Satan will put us on the outside. Yeah. But listen, stand for Jesus. I thought when Sixers was saying that song there, uh, Brother Junior, we might ought to come and have a little prayer and a little talk to Jesus. Yeah. And he'll put everything in order today, brother. Right. Listen today. Right. Uh, we need to be a little stronger, brother. That uh, that will move right in and take a seat right behind you, children. Uh, don't let him do that. Stand up for Jesus. Did you hear me? What I'm going to tell you tonight. God got it all, and He don't have nothing. That's why that He fights us uh, uh, today so hard, brother. This little group of people here uh, at the Old Brush Creek Church uh, have gathered for one thing, and that's worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Uh, I thought my sister <coughs> sang that song of starting there. I said, he'll come out. We got to have faith. As a grain of mustard. See, do you, if you sing the mustard, see that little little brother Bill? It's not very big. Yeah. And it's not very big, but boy, it's got a lot of power there. Yeah. That's where we are. We grow up. Yeah. Become men and women. Don't we? It's every bit through Jesus. Go ahead, right. uh, talk about that small there. It, it made me think about been studying on about when Mary comes to Elizabeth's house there, and, and even as the angel said that uh, John would be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. And there there was as two, two women had their babies in their womb. And of course, John was about five months older than, than the Lord. And at the time that Mary got there, I figured it up by the time we built that Jesus wasn't no bigger than my little fingernail. But when he come on the scene, that power excelled beyond anything we can imagine. Amen. That that little fellow that was in that womb knowed that he was in the presence of majesty. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. And talking about two wounds separating them, natural, couldn't see, couldn't touch, couldn't smell, couldn't hear, uh, but yet that spirit overwhelmingly that, that and that, and hit just in a little being about that size of my little finger. Yeah. So that ain't got nothing to do with that side though. Mm -hmm. It's the power of the living God. It's spiritual. God said, I am a spirit. And he's everywhere present. Yes, he Omnipotent, is. omnipotent, yes, omnipresent God. All powerful, all knowing, always present God. Think about that. Well, that good. And he he said, I am a spirit. And I seek as such to worship me in spirit and in truth. Amen. It ain't something that you can logically wrap your mind around. It ain't something you get a hold of with your hands. It's it's faith. It's impossible to please God without faith. But with this faith and the operation that God brought in His Son Jesus, everything Jesus set up here, believe. And if we're a believer, what are we a doer of it? That's right. Then we can have what the brother was talking about there, Amen. and his uh, sisters were singing about. 
and uh, can feel it right down in our lives and know that it's real for ourselves. Yeah. This word, now let me get started here. This word in which we preach, no writer, God bless him right a long time ago. Sure this word in which we preach, it is my thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, mm -hmm. the word of faith. It's already there, Brother Morris. But for us, when we were still out in the world of sin, and we heard the gospel and that word, well, we know it was the truth. Amen. It was cutting us all to pieces, and I got to the point where I said, I ain't going back. I told my daddy, I said, I ain't going back. Why, son? I said, because it's about to kill me. He said, that's what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> Amen. It was a bother me. I know that's guilty. And when I found out that I was guilty, it never did leave me. And a lot of people will run from it all the days of their life. But I can tell you what a wise man will do. Just keep facing it like a man will do or like a full-grown woman will do. Face it. And God will let you know exactly what you need to do to make everything right. Amen. He's a still, small voice. He ain't going to speak you know, in your natural ear. But right down inside of you say, I need a Savior. I know I'm lost. I need a Savior. I don't know what to do. That's where I was at. That's where we saw. I don't know what to do. We've heard the gospel and everything and know what it was said to do. Move out of his faith and everything. But when you get to the point where you say to the Lord, I don't really know what to do, Lord. Except you guide me, direct me, I'm going to be lost. Except you save me, and me, I'm going to be lost. And when you get to the point where you're a broken and contrite spirit right down inside, he said, and that's faith believing, repenting, no, we've done wrong and we're trying to make right, repenting unto the Lord. He said, in no wise, this is a promise, Brother Chris. Right. He said, in no wise will I turn you away. Right. But I'll accept you as being sons and daughters, and Father God be your father, and you'll be sons and daughters unto him. Think about that promise. No wise will he turn you away. Right. If they'll come the way the Lord told them to, what, how's that? Just let go of the world, let go of all that. Say, so here I am, Lord. I don't know what to do, but your spirit will direct me in doing what I, I need to do. And you know what it directed me to do? It was me. It, it may not work this way with the next person because he knows what each one of us needs, Brother Terry. Yeah. I needed not to be ashamed. I needed to step down away from pride. I needed not to be as the world teaches a man. My daddy didn't teach me to be that way. The world teaches us, don't you cry. Don't you shout like a woman. But I'm telling you in the spirit, now the Lord put this on me because that's what was keeping me out. And I had to get that out of the way. And when I did, I cried like a baby. Glad of it. I ain't a bit ashamed of it now. And I squalled like a woman. And God forgave me of my sins and had me into the church. And I've been a happy little pilgrim on my journey. Praise the Lord. How about you all? Amen. Amen. Is there anything impossible for the Lord to do? I don't know. He can handle us. He knows what we need. Right. Now, every individual in here, you all come probably a little bit different way. And it's the same way with the ones still out there. They know what. They know what's in the way. They really do. They, they know that it's their self somehow in the way. Because the Lord is true and He promised that He'll add them to the church. The very moment that they turn their whole heart over to the Lord, He said, I'll be found with you. Think about that. It, this is a simple way. Sometimes we probably try to make it complicated. Don't mean to. But it's a simple way. Yeah. Faith believing. And God bless. God had it through the church daily. That should be saved. And who is that? Those that really truly believe and do what God said to do. Confess Him with your mouth. Be buried with Him in water and baptism. And to His death raised up with Him, walking in newness of life. That's a simple way, man. Yeah. The scripture says, the old man be a fool. We're talking about a woman too. Be a fool. They should not err therein. God made it simple. Yeah. He's a spirit. And he's a seeking. He's seeking everybody out in the world uh, to come out of the world. He's seeking, you know. He loves you. He died for you. Uh, he's raised for you. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father for you. Amen. And I sometimes, Brother Terry, and I know I'm taking too much time here, I, I like to visualize the Lord. I I've done this ever since I was young. I want to hear you so bad that he's doing And I get you in my case. They're about to whisper something in their heart to me, you know, want to hear from people. Yeah. Want them to turn their life over to the Lord. And he, like I said, he's everywhere present all the time. He hears everything, knows everything. And, and that's one of the things in Revelation it's speaking about. But, you know, seven eyes and seven horns, which is the seven spirits of the living God sent throughout all the earth. Amen. And they're here. Yeah, 
I felt it this evening. How about you? Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. We'll soon be going to prayer. If you've got anybody that you want to mention, feel free. But you can always like to remember the home of one member of the King family. Yes. Yeah. What was his name? Newman. Newman, yes. <coughs> anybody else? Uh, Charlie, I'd like for everybody to remember Vicki this evening. Her sister's back in the hospital and uh, it's a room of that family. And there's also a, a, another couple of uh, young people that I've got to know down to the years. Their mother, or their dad was already gone at a young age and their mother just passed away. <coughs> and uh, it's uh, remember them in our prayers. They're just the two two kids that I know of that they, that they had and uh, I watched them grow up and and it's a, it's remember that family. I was over at Cat Creek on Thursday night. I was telling Brother James and Brother Bruce there and, and uh, I can't remember Brother David's last name. He's, he's, uh, he's a big preacher. I mean, a pretty good sized man and a good preacher. I've heard him before. But I can't think of his last name but he just got out of hospital emergency surgery and his bowels had locked up and like to kill him, he said. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was there that night to, to speak and he said the only thing that he could just just speak. He wasn't supposed to, you know, get excited or anything. He just got out of the hospital. Remember him. Uh, we, we need our ministers, we need our people. And there seemed like there was an awful lot of sick folk anymore. Things going wrong. We had a good time around there. Anybody else? Charlie, remember Sister Bonnie and all our lost people, and uh, let's remember all the people that uh, are less fortunate than we are during Christmas, and maybe those that might be spending Christmas the first time without their loved one or something. It's a sad time for some people. Yes, mm -hmm. yes it is. Anybody else? Brother Charlie, uh, 
remember me and my family, my daughter, she's down in Myrtle Beach at that football game for Marshall and just be in prayer that they get back home safely. Pray for the loss of my family. Remember Sister Pam, she wasn't feeling well. She does at times, so I know she was going to pray for it, but not to, not to come. And I'm sure she would want y'all to be praying for it. And I'm sure she would ask for it. Her blood pressure. I, th I don't think it's her blood pressure. I think it's been doing pretty good. Okay. Um, but she said she was having one of those weak spells. I bless her. Anybody else? All would like to have a part of this prayer, that picture. And always like. Brother said that a man ago, remember our lost people, and we have a big list of them, and we used to go through all of that. But you all hear it from time to time on the radio, remember them, and then, of course, you lost too. I mean, it's, if we wrote everything down, the boys hit the beach, it would be a lot. You know, that day, just in our community that we know of, it would. Anybody else? For Charlie, there's uh, uh, one of Bonnie's daughters, her whole family's got COVID, and Thomas has got it. I think you're all doing okay with you. Thank you, Chris. Yes, thank you. Just remember our country and our military. Yes. <coughs> a lot to pray about. And a lot to be thankful for. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. All those good and perfect gifts that come down from the Father of Lights that we thank. It's like some of them have, have mentioned here this evening. And, uh, and the things that I say that's unseen, there's so many more unseen things, Brother Bill. And the things that we see and notice that God has done for us. We want to thank you for those things too. Anybody else? If there's nobody else, uh, Brother James, would you lead us in the prayer? Everybody pray. The Lord this evening that we bow our heads in the reverence of you, Lord. God, we know, Lord, that while that we live here upon the earth, we must fight the fight of faith, good Lord, with that good Holy Spirit that you send down here for. Well, Lord, our God, to see that we would, Lord, to look down to this little church service tonight, remember those. Good Lord, that's got some people in trouble and wanting to be saved and this and that, but God, we know, God, that you're sorry, your God is everywhere. Lord, we, we preach in these all lines, God, everywhere. And he's willing that men and women would only steal away some words and cry out to him. And he'll always take care of me. He'll, he'll take care of anybody that wants to be taken care of. But, good Lord, we pray, in the Father, that you look down in this world service here tonight, the old Brunswick <coughs> Church. And good Lord, we know in the Father when we come to these places that we feel your Holy Spirit and your Holy Word, Lord, that comes down in our lives. And God, we just, that's just can't stand still, Lord. We have to say something that's good for you, because you done it all for me a long time ago, and I'll never forget you as long. As I have breath to speak, and I want to hold your name up above everything in life today. For you are alive, and you want to save our people, Lord, if we can just get it over. My families, your families, and the need brothers and sisters, I under the sound of our voice this evening, they don't, no doubt in my mind that they have to give anything they had to see the loved ones come out from among the world and be you separated from God. And except me, there's nothing. I'm telling you tonight, brother, time is getting close here up on, on our people. And, uh, they need to wake up and need to know where the keeper lives and where he stays at. But he's in our hearts this evening that we may cry out and tell our people wherever that we go, let them know whose side that we're on, who we are, and what we are. God makes us what he wants out of us and if we're uh, willing and all of these good things and he'll add something to us uh, at the end of, the, of this race that will be eternal with him in heaven's country. That's what I'm looking forward to, looking forward to be able uh, to not be mine from the heart of him, to be able to live with him throughout the age as well. Uh, the age of on we 
Uh, when we got him in our hearts and got him in our minds today, we need to keep uh, uh, on this old road that we're traveling today. But when that after a while, uh, brother, we're going to sign our prayer last prayer, preach your last message. Uh, uh, but I'm ready to go and I stay that way. Uh, I, I don't want to take no chances, but I want to see my Savior. He done it all for me. In Jesus' precious name, we pray to you. Amen. 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 Glad to have Brother Bill with us this evening. My brother Terry, and want to, uh, uh, Lord knows, put that time up between us if they want to work together. And my brother Bill can come take whatever time he wants. Follow the Spirit. Spirit makes you to go on and go on. But, uh, and I'm sure we're very understanding, just like I did. Yeah. We know how long we to die, here, so you got used to that, ain't you? <laughs> Thank you, Brother Dale. Okay. I'm listening this evening, but we need to do what God expects of us. Oh, yeah. There's so much that we don't do that He wants us to do and ask us to do. Yeah, you know, Brother Stewart, you brought a lot of things on his mind while I was sitting there. Bless him, Lord. It says over in the, I believe it's in the book of Hebrews. It says, God, who at sundry times and divers manners, has spoken to the fathers by the prophets, the old, in the old book. Right. And you can find that out when man was first put here upon this earth. When Adam was formed out of dust of the earth and God breathed into his nostrils that breath of life and he became a living soul and then he took a rib out of him and made one. Amen. And he told him, he spoke to him and he told him, he said, you can eat of every tree here in this garden except one. And I want you to stay away from it. And that's the very one that Satan was pushing on. The very one that he was showing them how beautiful it was. Yeah. It was good to look upon. And it'll make you like God. Yes. Yes. That's the first light he told Bless him, Lord. And then you can go up and talk, uh, read about another man that God had spoke to. And him and his wife was up in years and didn't have a child. And God sent an angel to them and told them that they would have a child. Sarah even laughed about it. She was too old. She thought it was impossible. But God said she could. Yeah. And she did. And when that child got up to a certain age, God spoke to Abraham again and told him. He said, Abraham, he said, here I am, Lord. He said, I want you to take your son Isaac, the one I gave you, the only son that you have, and I want you to take him and offer him up as a sacrifice. Yeah. Now, you know, these sacrifices they used to do years ago back in the old scriptures, you can read about it, how that they would go out into the flock and they would pick the very best they had to offer and bring it up and have it offered, give it to one of the priests and have it offered for a sacrifice. That their sins might be stayed for a year. They wasn't forgiven. They were just stayed for a year. God would overlook it for that period of time. And next year they had to do it all over again. But he told Abraham, he said, take your son to a place that I will show you. Where to take him. He took two young men with him. Took his son, he took the wood, he took everything that was necessary to do what God had told him to do. That's what he expects us to do. Take everything necessary that we need to live a life that's pleasing her and That's right. And when he got to this place, he was sitting there, I think it's for three days, and he looked off and he saw the place that God had told him to take his son. He told the young men that was there with him, he said, You all wait here, he said, Me and the lad is going to go there and worship him. He had confidence in it. He knew that God was able 
to give him another son, I believe, if something he did have to go through and kill his son. How many of us would do that? Do we have enough faith if God told us to do that when we go do it? But he took his son a third and done everything he was supposed to do. And his son asked him, he said, here's the wood and here's the things for the sacrifice. Where's the sacrifice? What did Abraham tell him? He said, God will provide. Himself a lamb. He did then and he did for us. And that lamb that I believe that he sent in the world for us, it says through him we can have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. When Abraham offered up his son, the Bible says he took the knife and was going to draw it back and an angel spoke to him and said, Abraham. He said, you're right. He spoke to him. He said, do thy son no harm. We done seen him. God has already seen what he wanted to see. Is he seeing us what he wants to see? Thank you, right. That bothers me sometimes when I read about some of these old brethren and the things that they went through, the faith that they had in God and what he was able to do, and I wonder about myself. There's nothing in this world so important that we ought to let it stand between us and God. That's right. Amen. Nothing. We should be able to be as Abraham if it come down to it. And I thought of that love that God had for us. I've got, I've got some boys of my own and I would hate to give one of them up. And I think all the time, thank you Lord, that we don't have to do that today because you love me enough that you sent your son. Yeah. Think about that. Think of the love, the great love that God had for us. Yeah, man. He said the very best that heaven had to offer. There was a group of people come to him one time and he said, don't think that you're a seed of Abraham. He said, because God is able to these stones to raise children out of Abraham. Amen. Where is it? One of them asked him that. He said, how do you know Abraham? You're not yet 50 years old. Abraham has gone long before that. Amen. He said, before Abraham was, I am. I'm the one that you need to look upon. I'm the one that you need to follow. Praise the Lord. How many people down through that time period when he was walking here upon God's footstool, how many people actually come and serve him? Paul said in the Scriptures how many men that he was seen of, how many brothers were seen of, 500 at one time saw him when he came forth out of the thing. Paul said, last of all, he was seen of me. There's one born out of two times. And I'm so thankful that God loved us so much that He gave those people that wrote this book right here the knowledge, and I believe that He moved their hand, their pen when they were writing it down because there's not a man in the world that could have wrote this book. Amen. By himself. Amen. You get to have some help. And God helped them. Every one of them, he helped them write this book. And he tells us in here what we must do to inherit eternal life. And when he said God, when it said in there, God who had sent his time and in divers man spoke to the Father by the prophet hath in these last days spoken to us by his sons. Amen. His son Jesus Christ speaks to us in that still small voice. We don't hear Amen. God just like Brother Junior was talking about a while ago in a big loud voice. That's right. That still small voice that yeah. speaks to us in his eyes. That's right, that's right. And he teaches us that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Amen. We've got power that's down in us that can overcome anything that Satan has to throw at you. When you begin to get in trouble with Satan, you're allowing him to do a little bit more than you should. Amen. What we need to do is get, it, get him away from us and tell God about it, and God will remove him. He will take him away from us. He'll guide us. He'll lead us. He'll watch over us. He said he would be closer than a brother. He'll go with us all the way to the end of the world. Where is he? Woo, he ain't got nobody in this world to do it, have he? All right. No, but he will. That's he will. Right. He promised it. He promised in the Scriptures that he would. Yeah. And I believe that when Abraham was stopped from killing his son, he looked fine. 
and he saw a ram hung in the bush. <laughs> he went down in, didn't he? Yeah. And offered him up for a sacrifice. God gave him a ram. He gave us a lamb. His precious son, Jesus Christ. Yeah. You know, we got a lot to be thankful for. Yes, we yeah. have. Every morning that we wake up, we should thank God for giving us another day because He could have took that breath of life that's in this old body out at any time. Right. And there is a day that's out there awaiting each and every individual in this house and in the whole world. He said there is a bound that you cannot pay it and every hair on your head is numbered and when that time is up, you leave. I don't care how healthy you are. I've seen pe people in this world as a picture of health able to do just about anything they wanted to, die with a massive heart attack. Didn't even know they were sick. Their time was up. Yeah. Their time was up. Amen. When God called us out of this world, so we're leaving, Amen. no matter what kind of shape we're in. But he teaches us in the scriptures to be ye always ready. Amen. Prepare yourself, because that day's coming. Yep. He's telling the whole world that I'm coming one of these days, and if I don't come before you leave this old world, you better prepare anyway, because as the tree falls, so shall it be. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. But he that is righteous. Let him be righteous. Yeah. We're right. a child of his, and he's kept us all down through time in our life. If God's been with us and got us, we're going home tonight. He tells us in the scriptures we are. Yes. We're going to a place that he said, I go to prepare for you that where I am, there he may be also. He said, In my father's house there are many mansions. He said, If it was not so, I would have told you. Jesus Christ, the whole time that he was here and talked to his disciples and the people, he told everyone the truth about things that was going to take place and things that was going to happen then. They didn't have no reason to doubt him, but they did. Yeah, they did. People doubted him because a lot of them still looked at the old law. Mm -hmm. But there was a man that didn't do. He told those people, he said, if you would have known your father Abraham, he would have told you about me. Because he did. Read about it in the scripture. Jesus Christ was with God before worlds, but before man was ever placed here on the earth, Jesus Christ was yeah. his father. And God sent him into this world. That through him we can have the right to go home someday. And I've tried my hardest to picture in my mind what kind of place that's going to be. And he tells, he shows us just a little bit every now and then. He gives us a blessing, he'll send one down. All good things come from above. Yeah, where is he? But he said, I have not seen near as heard near as in the heart of man the joy that awaits him. So what kind of joys awaits us is far greater than any joy that you'll ever see in this life. God has gone awaiting for us, those that love and serve, and will do the things he commands us to do. He'll watch over us and guide us and lead us and we have nothing to worry about if we'll put our trust in Him because He'll never leave you and He'll never forsake you. Man will leave you. I can tell you I'll stay with you, brother, till you die. Be gone next week. God won't give you be right there by your side. Yeah, right. If we're doing what He commands us. Yeah. He told us in these last days He's speaking to us by His Son. Jesus Christ. Trust Him. He'll never leave you. He'll always got you right. He'll tell you right. And he's got people all over the world that will tell you what you must do to inherit eternal life. Yes. You know, he calls. He didn't say that preaching was foolishness. He said by the foolishness of preaching, men were being saved and it pleased God. Yeah. God pleased with that. He enjoys seeing one come up out of his seat and give him his life. You can read in the scriptures where there's more rejoicing over heaven than one soul being saved in all the 99 until he's saved. You ever think about that story about the shepherd? That 99 sheep back here and he lost one. He leaves the 99. They're not lost, they're good. Save Most them. of us in this room are not lost, we're good. He's seeking that one that's lost and he'll go and, and do his best until he finds him. Yeah. 
But you've got to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior or He'll never move in. You've got to get your heart right and God is able to take that stony heart out of that old body, out of that inward man and put it in the heart of flesh. Then where you can accept it. And I'm going to tell you something. He said, me and my Father will come in and sit with you. Oh, you ain't never had nothing like it. There's not a pill, there's not a drink, there's nothing in this world that will satisfy you like that will. Right. God give you something that you can take to your grave with and be satisfied with Him because He'll never leave you hanging out here by yourself. He'll never do that. That's right. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. And I don't know of anybody that He left out. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All of us. That's true. But God made a way because He loved us. He gave us His precious Son that we could come to Him at any time. He never sleeps. He set Him on the right hand of the Father making intercession for us when we need to call upon Him and ask Him to forgive us for something we said, thought, or whatever it was. He's always there. And I believe He looked over to the Father if we ask Him in the right manner. Ain't that something? Far greater than we are. Far greater than we'll ever be in this life. Yeah, sure but you know what? He said we can be an heir and enjoy an heir with Him. Yeah. One of these days when this life is over, and He said, where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know. The disciples didn't know where He was going. They asked Him, where are you going? And He said, I've got to leave Him. I'm leaving this Lord. But He said, I'm not leaving you comfort. And he did. He sent them that comfort. That Holy Ghost down Oh, That they could still feel his presence. And they could still walk like they could when he was here. You know, that, that must have been like losing the best friend you ever had in this world. Yeah. When he left. I thought about that many times. Here he is. And I could see him. And just have to touch him every now and then if I want to. And he left this old world. Now he's giving me something that I gotta go on my own. But he's giving me something to go with me. He got me and leave me. And help me because without him, we're nothing. That's right. And we could do nothing. We can't even walk as the old song said without him holding our hands. Before we get through that door this evening, he can come and take one of us out of here. Before next week comes around. I'm not trying to scare nobody, but that's the scripture. We're not promised no more other than today. That's why he says in the scriptures, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart, as in the days of provocation, the day is the day of salvation. Today is. That's right. We may not have it tomorrow. And I'm, I'm as guilty as anybody else. I've got mistakes sitting way out here. Things I'm going to do next week or week after. I may not be here. I may have to let somebody else finish what I want to do. Or somebody else may finish. I heard an old brother say one time, he said, I put my shoes on this morning, but the undertaker may take them off his seat. Yes, sir. We don't know. God knows. He knows every one of us, the very seconds that we're going to leave this old world. Yes. But make preparations. He loved us so much that he has given us everything that we will ever need to walk up right in this life and to do what he would have us to do. And I'm so thankful he didn't have to. Before Jesus Christ ever took a stripe on his back or thorns upon his head or anything could have called ten legions of angels to come and get him and bring him out of this old world and destroy everyone that you but he didn't. Why? He came to do the will of his Father with sin in him. Right. And he loved us so much he stayed right with him. People can't imagine the beating that he took. I read one time in some world about the whips that they used. They put pieces of bone tied on the end of the whips that when they cracked, they just cut, cut the flesh like a knife. And they used different things to do that. And they would beat him so bad. Right before he died, they wanted to feel those nails and things going into his hands and feet. They wanted to feel every bit of that. His father didn't go ahead and finish him, and he couldn't die anyway. 
until what God said was going to happen happened. And when he hung him upon the cross, when he said it was finished, it was finished. Yeah. You know, God, when he created all this old world, the Bible says that everything there in it, he rested on the seventh day, because on the sixth day, everything was done that he went to accomplish. Even us sitting here today, God took care of that many years ago. And he knows your heart. And he knows where we stand before him. And if we got a problem, we need to take care of it and get in as close as we can. He said, draw nine to me and I'll draw nine to you. We need to get as close to him as we can. Because there's a power out there. Satan is going about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. But with God on our side, read in the old scripture, with God on their side when they went into battle, they never lost a woman. When they leave him out of the picture, it's bad things begin to happen in the They went to fight a battle one time. I like this story because it's not a story, it's true, but it's, it's a story that they wrote for a while. They went to fight this battle and, and they told him, said, how many men do you think we should take? Ten thousand. He said, no, that's way too many. He said, they won't believe that I helped them. These men won't believe that I helped them you take that many. And I think he got down to five thousand or something. He said, no, it's still too many. He said, I'll tell you what I want you to do. Go down to the river's edge and those that's lapping up water like a dog, those are the ones you take. And I think it was three of them. And that's the ones he took to the battle. And guess what? He won the battle. Because they won the battle because he done what God said to do. Right. You know the only thing that's going to keep you out of heaven is unbelief. Because if we believe in God and what he's able to do and do the things he commanded us to do, we're going. He tells us we are. Unbelief is what's going to keep us out of heaven. You say you believe in Jesus Christ, action speaks louder than words. You can say anything you want to. But the way we live in this life and we walk and do things that's pleasing unto God, that's what's going to show people that we're a child of his. And I thank God today that he loved me so much that he sent that precious one down here that through him, through him, I can have eternal life and have a far better home than anything we could ever have down here. Because he's going to be with us. And he's going to take me anywhere he goes. He's going to be one. It's going to be a place that we can't even imagine in our minds. But I know it's wonderful because he's there. Yeah. And what he's done for us, I'm looking forward to going to tell him, thank you, Lord. Yeah. Bowing at his feet. Tell him, you know, there's people all over the world that said, I want to go and see my uncle, my mommy, daddy, whatever. I want to see my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because of what he did. Amen. He gave me the opportunity that I could go there with him. And I'm thankful for that. Amen. So without him, we could do nothing. That's right. And I'm so thankful, brothers. Are you know. That's a blessing. Real good.
chose these prophets that spoke to them and warned them, just like Brother Peter was talking about. We need that. We need his brother to stand up here and preach and warn us and, and show us things that maybe this little scripture here might slip by me. But another brother might hit it in a way that it'd ring a bell to me and cause me to not be ignorant in it. And this is the way that the Lord draws his people close to them. And he teaches them. Yeah. But it all starts from obedience. If you're not willing to be obedient in it, then you cannot serve this, this living God. And I say that because God is spirit, and he seeks those who worship him in truth and spirit. And we get down to this time of the year, and we think about all that little story in, in, in Luke 1 and 2. And Brother Jim spoke on it this morning on, on the radio, told the whole story, wonderful story. And I just want to hit on a few things maybe tonight. Uh, and one of them being, you know, this natural being right here, Jim, when we're out working, our minds are busy, our hands is doing things, but our minds sometimes is up on this right here. Yeah, and we're rehearsing this stuff in our minds, and our, mind, our, our little hand, man, is you know, just doing this and that, and we'll be getting a task done in the natural, but we're getting a bigger task done in the spiritual. Now, I've been there many times, and I know what I'm talking about. The Lord, yeah. Yeah. the Lord will start revealing things out of you. You just can't hardly wait until you get home to pop that Bible open. And, oh, man, you know, the Lord showed me this, and I want to see what this is about. And when you get home and you open that Bible up, it just, it all works out perfect. But God is spirit, and he works, he works in, in truth and in spirit. Now, today, speaking about truth, it's a hard matter to find any truth in this world today. And that's a fact. People want it either with their own agendas, they got their own plans, and they want you to, to believe in them and their ways. But it's not, it's not meant to be that way. There is a truth. And God has his plan. And he's wanting you to know about it. Yeah. Just like those little shepherds that was out in the field on that, on that Christmas day a long time ago. They was out there doing a job. Keeping them sheep where they needed to be, protecting them. Standing around, no doubt, with fires, you know, nighttime, probably cold, and was watching, doing the job. They was on the job watching. And this great angel appeared unto them. And fear fell upon them, men, just like it would me and you today if something like that. Our knees would go to shake and quiver because we're just mortal men. Yeah. And for this great thing to appear unto them. And the angel had to tell him, fear not, for I bring you tidings of great joy which shall be unto all people. Listen to that, all people. He didn't say unto Israel. He said unto all people. This is God's will. Amen. He's getting ready to go into second gear here. He's shifting from the Old Testament to the New. That spirit, or that, that angel began to speak to them men and said, For this day the city of David is born unto you a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Those little shepherd boys know what that was about. Because of those men that God sent. Those good, holy men that wasn't afraid to tell them the truth. Yeah. That wasn't afraid to go out here and say, hey, thus saith the Lord God. And if they took their heads, they'd say, this saith the Lord thy God. And he'd tell them how it is. Because of them, the word went out. The people was ready for this man, this Messiah. That's right. Those little shepherd boys wasn't ignorant in that. They know what that meant. Yeah. And that angel began to tell them where to find him mm -hmm. and how to find him and what he would be when he when they found him. He'd be wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And when that great angel and, 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 and all that heavenly host that they saw and witnessed there, whenever they went away, they got in a big hurry, didn't they? Yeah, sure let did. us go. Let us go find out what this is all about. Right. A lot of times, it's like I said about what we do in the Scripture right here when the Bible, uh, when the Lord comes up on us and the Holy Spirit starts to speak to us, and we're, we can't hardly wait. Can't hardly wait to get back to the house and get in that Bible and yeah. search that out. Yeah. It's no different. The boys was uh, they was wanting to see this promise. Amen. And they was wanting to see it back. They left what they was doing, left that flock behind, and they went down here to see. It. When they got there, they saw what the angel had told them. And they looked upon that thing. They 
think about what a blessing. How many times in your heart of hearts have you looked upon Jesus Christ and you've seen him in the manger and you've seen him on the cross and we were not ignorant even when we read the scripture and the Holy Spirit began to talk to us and bid unto us and teach us all things which he'd have us to yeah. each unto his own. God knows what you need. Yeah, who we did. And they witnessed that. And I thought about what a blessing that would be to witness that. And it said that they went and left that. And they went and they told everybody that they knew. Yeah. Listen, friend, yeah. when the Lord spoke pardon to you, and you come up and you told the preacher, hey, if there's a change in me, I want to be baptized. And he led you to water and baptized you. And you come out of that water knowing, knowing that you had something that you didn't have when you went in. Yeah. Knowing that the Lord was in your life. I know you're no different than me. I was, I was mad. I was wanting to go tell somebody. Yeah. <laughs> I was wanting to tell everybody. Yeah. I was wanting to tell all my friends, all my family. I was going to tell them what I had. Praise the Lord. That's the way it works. And I began to think about the scripture and how it said through all these works and all these things that Mary, she witnessed that. And he said she kept that in her heart and she pondered on it. Yeah. What this must mean. Mary, the little woman that the angel spoke to and said this was going to come about. And she said, let it be unto me according to thy will. The handmaiden of God. All these things she kept in her heart she pondered on. Now I want to bring up to you a little place here after Christ came into me. Uh, eight days said he was circumcised. And that was the law. Yeah. Should they was keeping the law. Yeah, that big day. Big part there, yeah. And when Mary had passed the time of her purification, she went down to present Christ. Because the, the scripture said that let every first born male be known and be called blessed. Because that is the way God intended it to be. And she brought this little baby Jesus down there. And it says this man, Simeon, was there. And the Holy Spirit had already told unto him and, and revealed unto him that he should not die until he had already seen his Savior. And as she brought him in, immediately the Holy Spirit Revealed unto him. Here he is. Who that baby was. <laughs> and immediately he went straight up to. Can you think about that? When the Spirit tells you something's going to come about, and you'll know it when he speaks to you. And you see it come about. And you knew it was going to come about. Man, that just that just icing on the cake to me. When I'm reading the scripture and, and God's working in my life and then he reveals something and it comes about. And man, that is icing on the cake. How good God is to us. Yeah. Amen. <clears throat> but I think about that man. And he said he went and he took that baby right in his arms. I would have too. Yeah, man. And he began to look at Mary, this woman that weighed all things and kept it secret in her heart. And he said, This child is born for the rise and the fall of many in Israel. Yeah. <clears throat> and he, <clears throat> he began to warn her and tell her, a sword shall pierce thine own heart. Yeah. That the hearts and the thoughts of many shall be revealed. Yeah. Think about that. That's it. Now a lot of people look at that and they, I don't understand that. <laughs> well let me tell you. Let me let me let me try to explain a little bit to you. Let's look at that sword that he's talking about that's going to pierce Mary's heart. Scriptures reveals unto us to put on the whole armor of God. And he goes into telling every detail about that armor. And when it comes down to that sword, it begins to, re to, to really come to the point. Literally. The sword of God, which is the Word of God. That's right. And we begin to look up what the Word of God is. The word
Word was with God. The Word was God. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory again. Only begotten of God. Therefore, the sword of God is Jesus Christ. Yep. Simeon was telling her, A sword shall pierce through thine own heart. When Christ hung upon the tree of the cross, that sword pierced Mary's heart. Jesus Christ pierced her. That the thoughts and the hearts of many should be revealed. Let's think about that. The scripture spoke back in the Old Testament that the hearts of Israel had turned from God. Their hearts had turned from God. Yeah. But through this man called Jesus, this sword, he was telling her that the hearts and the minds of men should be revealed. It's going to be brought back around. He's going to come into his own. His own's not going to receive him. But as many as does, they're going to be the sons of God. Yeah, they be. They was the one got pierced. Yeah. Think about it. Now think about it. When you was on the outside of the ark of safety and you didn't have Jesus Christ in your life, you wasn't adopted in, grafted in contrary, according to the Bible, to that olive tree. You're still out there. What had to happen to you before you could have this that we have now? That, that old stony heart right there had to be busted up. And I'm telling you that the sword done it. Right. That Jesus Christ done it. Pierced. That he pierced you through. And I've heard it say a lot of times, and I've jokingly, I think from right here, it said that he pierced me and I died and, and came alive in the same in the same struggle. And it's true. That's true. You're going to die out to sin, but you're going to come to life in serving Jesus Christ. Yeah, man. Double-edged. That's what that scripture meant right there when you speak from Mary. Now let's go on a little bit further. Bless you, Lord. A little bit later, this man, this, this child, Jesus, 12 years old, was found teaching in the synagogue. His mom and dad didn't even know where he was at. They had already left with the band and had to turn around and come back. They were looking for him. When they found him, he simply said, Must I not know that I'd be up about my father's business? And while he was speaking there and preaching to them, the very living word of God that was preaching to them and astonished them men in so much that they thought, he knows all things. He's 12 years old. Astonished him, them old brother. And they studied them scripts. That was their job. They in they out studying. That's that was that tribes, and they supposed to know. And you know, the scripture said that he become subject unto them. Back in the old scripture, it was not it was not lawful that a man would preach until he reached the age of 30 years old. Now think about that. Christ becomes subject to his parents and kept the law until he come of age. And then it was on. Then he come out. And I mean, he come out swinging. Yeah. Praise the Lord. All this, I just want to bring to your attention. I know we ain't got much time. All this, all this because of you and I. Because of this old sinful world. Yeah. That God loved us in so much. Listen, before worlds was, Christ stood as the Lamb slain. This was the whole plan of God. Amen. That was kept, by the way, that was kept a secret. That was kept a secret. Until the right time. It was a mystery, yeah. And then it was revealed unto us. Now, since so the today, some, some they, they will not receive it. They won't receive it. Some of them old Jews over there, they still won't receive it. They still under the old law trying to serve God that way. It's impossible. You can't please God no more that way. That stuff is shut down. Party's over. In one way, Jesus Christ. Yeah. And who would want it any other way? Yeah, that's right. Seeing that He is the greatest thing that ever happened to this world. And that little story there in Luke 1 and 2. True story. Two, two scriptures. 
Who wouldn't want on this on this especially this time of year? Who wouldn't want to get in there and read that out and study it? And hang on to every word because it's there for a reason. And he'll lead you into it'll lead you all through this book. Because this man Jesus, this right here is all about him from front page to the end of it. That's right. It's all Christ. Yeah. The great love of God, his plan of salvation. It's all wrapped up in that little swollen clothes and that bathe in the manger and all the way down to where he's hung up on the tree of the cross and shed that precious blood that you and I should not die, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Yeah. Christ said to give you life and to give it to you in abundance. We've got a promise, like Brother Bill said, eternal life. Who in the world would want that? But yet the old devil is going to and fro. And he's got the blinders on this old world. And you know, there was a time that Christ was being tempted out in the, the wilderness there. And the old devil come to him. And the first thing that he hit him with was because he knew Christ had been fasting. He knew he was a hunger. The first thing he hit him with is a weak point. He was hungry. Make these stones in the bread. Now that's the way the old Satan works. And the last thing he, he tempted him with. Took him to the temple, pinnacle high. He showed him all the kingdoms of the world. He said, Father, worship me. I'll give unto you these things where it is mine to give unto thee. That right there, think about what he's saying. The world, the world is still today under that old serpent's powers. It's still his. That's why it's and I'll tell you what, it's going to burn with fervent heat. God not going to be mocked in anything. And he's going to wipe it all clean. And it's all going to come to a hand. And we're all going to stand before an all-wise God. And we're going to give an account for every deed we've done in the body. And we better be ready. Because we've got no promise of tomorrow. Our time is always Christ said. Just like Brother Bill said. We don't know if we're going to live the next minute, the next hour, the next day, the next week, the next year. We don't know none of it. Be ready. Be ready. Keep your lamps trimmed and burning, as the old song used to say. This man called Jesus, he was reading for the season. And when them angels stood before them, by the way, before I sat down, they give a blessing upon this planet and upon mankind. And I want you to get in there and read it. I don't want to say there ain't another word about it. I'd like you to just get in there and read it. I've dropped a, I've dropped a little seed there. Let's see. Let's see who, how many will get in there and just dig it out. Yeah, it's good. God blessed us back then in names by the words that they spoke to me, man. And I believe with everything in me, this time of year, when men's minds are up on Christmas and what it means. And I'm talking about the men and women out in the world, you know. It's with us always. We rise in the morning and the Lord what you have us to do. And, you. you know, we're, we're there. We're ready. We're looking for the return of Christ. And when I step out on the porch in a beautiful morning and I'm looking and I see that sun rising, it, it reminds me of, of the Lord every morning. But yet, there's people out there that's not ready. They're not willing to, to, to even hardly think about it. It's those people that we need to be really concerned about. And we, we, as their neighbors, we need to tell them this, this truth that I'm speaking of tonight. We need to tell them about this man called Jesus. We need to warn them that they're headed to a devil's hell. Now, they're not going to like it. I didn't like it, did you? No, you'd have to be honest about it. When the old preacher stood up here and he said, you know, uh, if you're out in the world and you're doing things you ought not be, your father is, is the devil. You're serving the devil. I, I didn't like to hear it. I, I didn't serve the devil. I don't steal. I don't, you know, I don't uh, I don't do all these things. I'm a good old boy. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Good old boys ain't going to make it into heaven. If you ain't got the blood of Christ applied to your life, that righteousness that Bill was talking about, let me tell you about that righteousness. The righteousness of man is as filthy rags. That's what the Bible says in Scripture. So then what's it talking about when it says God is no respected person? 
and in every nation he that fears God and work righteousness shall be saved. Right. Then how can we work righteousness? Think about this. You can't unless you've got Jesus Christ in you. That is the righteousness. That is the light that shines forth in darkness. And the darkness comprehends it not. That's Jesus Christ. He's the light of this world. He's the way, the truth, and the life. He's the He's the go between, I guess you'd say, between us and God. And if you ain't got him, you ain't got no go between. You're cut off. And I want you to see this real plain that there's nothing of yourself that you can do. You can try to get uh, to be a good person and work to, to try to, to uh, you know, in your own mind, you've got your own laws. And you're saying, well, I need to do this. I need to do that before I join the church. I need to get this straightened out. Let me tell you something. If you're doing that, you will never make it. The only thing you need to do is turn it over with a broken and contrite spirit unto the Lord. And say, Lord God, save me lest I perish. Yeah. I'm going to the devil's hell if you don't step into my life and make a change in this boy. Now that's the facts of the matter. And if you don't ever come to that, you're not never going to make it. Heaven will never be your home. But that's exactly what that scripture meant. Work righteousness. Work Christ. You could replace that work with the very word Christ. And it would mean the same thing. You work Christ in your life. You witness to your nation. And that's very important. And I mean very important. When we stand before an all wise God, Brother James, and He weighs us in the balance. Do you want him to hear you hear? Do you want to hear him say unto you, Well, you your neighbor lived beside you for 30 years, and you never not once went over and told him about me? God. Well, that'd be hard to hear. You better be up and about the Father's business, and you better be working righteousness through Jesus Christ. If you work any righteousness at all, it'll be for you. It'll be great love for you so that. May the Lord bless you and keep you my prayer. And Merry Christmas and be God. Very good. Yeah. Like brother, stand up front here, like my choir. Come back up and give you a song. Get like somebody ready for the old church. I want to let them know what you want. You give your life to the Lord. And that's the hardest, easiest thing that you'll ever do. Yeah. As Christians that's already here, we've, we've done that and, and it was hard to get the old flesh out of the way, but once we did, it surprised us how easy that God had fixed it that he'd add you to the church today. It should be so. Why you waited so long enough? Makes you, that's exactly right.
sing this song, if there's somebody here like this bad to Christian to be a friend for you, you come up and shake the brother by the hand, they won't embarrass you, won't keep you. You don't, you, to see. you don't want to save you, but in the eyes of God, Brother Terry, this is very important. I, you know, when I was a young young was seeking the Lord, didn't fully understand it, but one of the things stood out, God said, Draw nigh unto me, I will draw nigh unto you. Amen. And the best that I could figure to start doing that was to make this old creature do something it didn't want to do. Right. Because yeah. I know that was the right thing to do. Yeah. And so when I started doing that, it seemed like Brother Billy was getting a little easier all the time. And God means, he said, I'll draw nigh to you. And when he draws nigh, there's a prayer of God draw nigh to the person. Yeah. If they'll just move out on, start moving out on that faith, brother, just a little bit at a time, and God will bless. And you know, we pray for them anyways, Brother Bill, but how much better that it is when God sees her serious yeah. and it causes us to even get more serious and we want to pray more earnestly and uh, because, I mean, we want to rejoice that they've once come out of the fire uh, into the salvation of God, just like the angels rejoicing you all mentioned, you know. Yeah. Make that our glory settings. So while we sing, if there be one here or more that has a mind to uh, have a band of Christians be praying for you, come up and shake them by the hand. Going back to your seat.
out of the way and let the Spirit just lead them and bring forth the, the message that the church can be edified and that the people on the outside, for the James, with your word, little by, they can be saved. I always like to try to remember to do this. Is, is there one or more here in the house that would like this man to Chris be a friend for you just by raising your hand? God bless that hand. God bless. We've got a lot to pray for. Christian men and women. Yes. Praise the Lord for that. Yes. Anything else? Any, any appointments that needs to be made? Or just want to thank all our visitors for coming with us. Yes. Very thankful. Always appreciate it. Yes. I got a special song in our app. Go right ahead. And my voice is halfway down, so you all keep me in prayer. Today, well, this morning, and now, if I didn't go either day, by January, it would have been three years that I have set foot in a church, and I praise God for it. The devil's been at me, Charlie, so bad that I wanted to give up on everything. And I talked to my neighbors about it, and she said, Honey, as long as you have faith in God, it's going to come at you bad. She said, Just put your trust in God. I said, That's the problem. I don't know how. She said, Yeah, you do. You just never found it. So I went and I got my Bible, and I read one little scripture and stuck it under my pillow. And I told everyone, I'm going to put God first no matter what. There you go. And you know what? I've never felt no more great. Burden has lifted, Charlie, since this morning, and I can feel it still rolling away from me right now. And I praise God for it. And I know if I didn't set foot in the church, I know that I'd be alone. And hell would be in my home. And I don't want that. No. No one wants that. Right. I was raised in a Christian home, and I'm going to die in a Christian home. And I, that's the way I feel about it. Praise the Lord. So keep me in your prayers. I try to sing this song. This song means so much to me because it was actually my dream that I had a long time ago. One night while I lie sleeping in heaven, I did go to a land of milk and honey, joy overflow. There I saw the host of heaven. Then I heard a voice like thunder saying, Child, oh child, put your hand in your mouth. I'll show you things that this world has never seen. Look into the north and tell what you see. I said, I see your angels pierced and tremble, though I don't understand. Then he said, Child of love and child of labor, Look into the south and tell what you see. I said, I see the gates of hell swing open wide. Though is this where I will go when I shall die? He said, child of love and child of labor, you've kept thy faith to me. Enter in of the joys of the Lord and look into the east and tell what you see. I said, I see a man cloaked in white standing in the sun, though I still cannot understand. Then he said with a voice like a trumpet, look down toward the earth and tell what you see. I said, hallelujah for the great day when all of God's children will go marching in as I see the Son of God walking out of the sun, or walking out of the skies. Then I've been searching so long for the words to describe of a dream that I was given one well, night. It's a dream that I will treasure as long as I live. When I saw Jesus walking right out of the skies, the church doors were open and the singing began. Then the last sound of thunder tonight, I looked out the window and the heavens grew so bright. When I saw Jesus walking right out of the skies, Oh, I wanted to shout.
shout, but my lips could not utter a sound. I wanted to tell them. I looked toward the skies, and behold what I saw a coming down. Though it's a dream that I will treasure as long as I live. When I saw Jesus walking right out of the skies. Yes, it's a dream that I will treasure as long as I live. When I saw God and Jesus walking right out of the sky. Praise the Lord. God do this. So, all right. Any other appointments or anything? Yeah, nothing happens time wise. We'll have church. If you don't have anything to do next Sunday night, Christmas night, we will be having church here. If the weather permits. Y'all come back and be with us. If the weather permits. Yeah, if the weather permits. We're giving back weather permits. Well, I've heard, yeah. Anything else? If there's nothing else, Brother Christian, give us a dismissal for you. Heavenly Father, once again, we want to thank you for everything that you allow us to do. Father, we pray that the uh, head should be pleasing to you. Father, we ask now that you go uh, with us to our lower homes and establishments and watch after us and guide us. And Father, keep us safe uh, and throughout our rest of our days and, and keep us uh, on the path that. Stumble, and we keep our eyes on you and, uh, and, and have, as the brother spoke of, uh, have that faith to, to know that uh, everything is in your hands and that uh, you will take just care of us. Great. And Father, most of all, I want to thank you for uh, the best gift that was ever unwrapped in this world. I want to thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. He's done so much for us, and he's got so much more that he can do.